Well, let's talk about South Africa for a little bit because they've just won the rugby championship for the first time and they're going into this World Cup with more form than they've had for a long time. What did you make of, A, their performance against Argentina and uh, also their performance so far this season? Is, are they So the rugby championship, there's less games, I'm right, I'm saying yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, rugby, rugby right. championship is now finished. There's yeah. another round of games this weekend but they don't count as part of the rugby championship. Ah, that's why. I was wondering why Mostar was drinking out of the cup. I was like, this is a bit premature. <laughs> um, there you go, that's why. Yeah. So they won it in South Africa. South Africa are a force to be reckoned with. And obviously their first game in the World Cup is against the All Blacks. So they're going to go with to Garcia's that. With Garcia's as well. Oh, is it with Garcia's yeah. again? What's wrong with that? I just don't know. I just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Um, yeah, so yeah, South Africa are... You know, Erasmus has come in and, and changed things. They've gone back to what I consider the strengths of South African rugby. Big, bruising forwards, good driving game, blitz defence that, you know, they brought in into international rugby years and years and years ago. And you can actually see this team as a replica of the 2000, a very similar sort of nature to the 2007 World Cup winning team, um, you know, that won it over in Paris. Some great um, halves as well. Yeah, Faf de Klerk, he didn't have his best game at the weekend but he is quality Pollard at 10 rate him massively you know they've now settled on him they were Yankees before and Pollard is their 10 now um, you know Cheslin Colby Vili LaRue's in form well that's what I mean the, th- the, th- the thing is they're picking players I think before they had initial were picking players overseas didn't they yeah. whereas now like these, a lot of them know that they want to come to the Europe France as well, well as England to make money so you look at Mostar how well he's done at Gloucester and he probably, maybe a few years ago, they probably wouldn't have even looked at him. Mm. So now you mentioned Faf de Klerk, obviously Willie LePou, who turned into Willie LaRue a little bit last year, started to play a little bit better and uh, Erasmus has picked him. They are, you know, they are definitely massive contenders. Mate, South Africa got a massive chance. I just can't believe Australia pulled that out of the bag at the weekend. But again, like Czech has made some ballsy calls, O'Connor, um, Again, how good is it seeing him? He was quality. He was just a loose cannon, weren't he? And he obviously went to Toulon and wherever and then Sale. He's found himself through meditation. He's um, all, he, he said he's matured a lot as well, you know. And these, you know, Curtly Bill, he's been through issues. He's matured and they're seeing that this is a golden opportunity for them to... Ah. Their last, <laughs> uh, you see what I've done there? Their last, it's their last opportunity at a World Cup. Um, you know, Nick think, White was outstanding. Nick White well. was, yeah, again, to come from the Premiership. He's come over here and he's done exceptionally well. Extra back, Lele Ofano at ten. Yeah, that's yeah. the big one for me. Yeah, huge. They've got because Bernard Foley. Foley. Yeah, because F- Foley for me again, it's easy to bag players. Quality player in the big big moments. I don't know what the stats are. I just saw him miss a lot of big kicks, and I was like, you've got, you, you, if you're going to be a World Cup winning team, you know, or a semi finalist, you've got to be able to take them. And that's a ballsy call, isn't it? Mm. Do you think they'll back it up again this weekend <sighs> at Eden Park? I don't know. <laughs> So one of them, do they need to? I think they do. Cause so Otherwise, everyone will say it's a flash in the pan. You're playing in Perth. You're beating the All Blacks. They had a player sent off. It was a fluke. I don't think the Aussies have won there since the 80s. Michael Liner against Sean Fitzpatrick. Those two played in that game. I didn't see it. Saw that on Sky the weekend. One. That's why. Um, but yeah, can they back it up? I think they can. You know, I've got no doubt the All Blacks will be a different beast next week. Um, you know, especially with... 15 players on the field to start the game at least um, but they've got some serious questions the All Blacks haven't they they, ju- they just don't look the same do they? I think well, what's happened a lot of teams have caught up they've had a few issues with injuries as well uh, the direction of what they want to go and the yeah. depth You know, have they got the depth you talk about other teams knowing their starting team they've just shifted Barrett to Bowden Barrett's yeah. fullback to play Mwanga it's a massive shift just before a World Cup which I get but that's because they don't know what their best team is you know, their centre partnership, they keep chopping and changing that. How good is his lid, by the way? Who's? Jack Goodhues. Good oh, years. mate. What a lid. What a lid. I, I, don't, see, think, I don't think I've seen a better hair, hairstyle in my life. I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, that is Would you rock fucking, that? Could I? Well, but, both. Would cool. you or could you? Well, I'm, I'm slightly thinning now, so maybe <laughs> not. But I definitely could, if it would grow. 